Hello everybody. Are you ready for another streaming extravaganza? I hope so because I'm all set up and ready to get going. Peg, where are you at? There she is. <laughs> I'm always waiting for my friend Peg to pop on in first thing. Um, yeah. T Happy Friday, everybody. This is going to be a really kind of a fun, maybe quick, I don't know how long it's going to take to grind and polish these little earrings, but that is what we're going to do. Uh, before I get started, if you are considering supporting me, you like what you see here, if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to support me, the best way, honestly, is to subscribe to my Vimeo channel where I have hundreds, literally hundreds, of tutorials. Good morning from Vancouver. Good morning. So, but anyway, if you want to support me, that is actually the way I recommend versus any other subscription to, obviously you can buy my jewelry too. That would actually be even better, but also this. So happy Friday, Lou, and let's get started. So let me tell you what we're doing. First, we, oh, hey, Angie, good morning, good morning. Good afternoon, I guess, as the case may be. And hello from California. Um, it's been, we have wildfires here, not just from California. There was a wildfire in Brunswick County on Monday that started out as a controlled burn and then it was an oopsie daisy wire. And it's been like, there's like a coat of ash on my car and it's very smoky outside. Uh, so there we go. It's just that kind of a world now. So that being said, let's go to the workbench. Hey, I actually got started a little bit because I was, you know, just making sure everything was good. If you were joined, well, I haven't, if you've joined us in some of the previous live streams, you remember that we made these pendants. Look at this color. I am in love with this color combo. And, oh, hold on, let me turn the light on. Uh, on, oh, there we are. So we're going to, I've started a little bit of the grindy, but we're gonna grind these and get them all polished up and ready to go into the Etsy store. And, yeah, no, it's fine. I don't think like Wilmington's gonna burn down, but it, it was really, it's been very smoky. So not, not loving it. And, also hot, so it's just hot and smoky, and there's something like weird that triggers your fight or flight when you hear like all that smoke and you feel like you should be getting ready to run away, <laughs> but everything, they assure us, everything is going to be just fine. Uh, so, but yeah, so let's go ahead and get started grinding and polishing these things. Just FYI, I, all the things that I'm gonna be using today, um, are in my grinding and polishing kit that is available on my Etsy store. In this kit, there is sanding papers, the sanding disc that I'm just about to use, there is mandrels, there's pumice powder, everything you need to grind and polish if you have a Fordham. You do need to have your own Fordham for this, but that is available in my Etsy store. So there's all the plugs. We're done with the plugs. We're just gonna get to work now, I promise. So here we have, I just kinda got started, got the very first little bit going, and we'll start with the big piece right now. I'm gonna dip them in the water so you can see that the colors are gonna be really nice. I'm just loving these colors. So we're gonna set those over there. I'm going to actually be working under my microscope. So I am gonna turn on the micro. I have completely reset all my cameras. I don't know what happened last time, but it's we're back to the basics of just this setup. And then we have the kiln cam just straight up. I'm not fussing with it. So here's the kiln cam waiting for us for, grind, for our final fire polish. And here is the microscope. There we are, no, nothing to see here just yet but I like to kind of grind on my microscope just because, you know, I can't see. My eyesight is that of an old woman. So we're going to, I like to see exactly 
what we're doing. Let's move this over and let me make sure that, and I have already started a little bit. You can see I've done the grinding here. Oops. And you can see that all the places that the silver is exposed look good. They're nice and white and shiny. And that was kind of the first thing. And you can see there's a, a few areas that are still shiny, which may, they're a little bit divots. We're gonna kind of get those. And you can see just like right here, this little corner, see how it's not white? That's because it's still kind of hiding underneath the glass. And then also there's glass all around this rim. And so, but I did go ahead and I've already, I've already done the edges here, so we don't have to do the edges. Uh, we'll have to do the edges of these because we haven't done those, but we'll get to those when we get to those. So let's just double check that we can see what's going on. There we go. So yeah, just a lot of water. Oh, and I kind of did the big grind, you know, you definitely want to wear this, but since I've removed most of the material, you know what, I'll just be good and wear it. You know, do as, do as I do. Actions, wear your mask, at least until I get all of the glass removed. So that is, let's see if we are in focus here. Last little thing, focus this guy. That's as good as it's going to get. And where did it, my foot pedal has wandered off. And since I've done most of it in the center, I'm really focusing on removing the glass from the edge, right like that, see? Oh, and this is a diamond grit, oops, diamond grit sanding disc. Very, very handy. And I just, take, I say that, but there we go. I just can't, just cannot right now. Just having a look, I can see there's still a little bit of glass right here. See right there how it's sticking? We're gonna get that. And you can definitely over grind these things, so because it's fun, <laughs> because it's really satisfying. Um, and the way to know how you're doing is to dry the piece and look, make sure it's just like that. I do have a video all about grinding and polishing, so we're not gonna do too much talking about it, but you can see I got a little bit of it right there that I'm gonna get. And I'm looking, everything else looks good. I'm gonna get this little guy right there. That's good. Nice. So I'm gonna get all these earrings. We're gonna kind of work all, get everything to the same thing before moving on to the next phase. We're gonna kind of work them all at once. So that's what we got. All right, so that one's get it set aside. You know, we might as well do those earrings. No, we're gonna do these fancy earrings next. It doesn't matter. Let's just. Move that out of the way.
I haven't done quite as much grinding on these earrings, so there's going to be a little bit more work. Yeah, in a class, if you ever, if you hand me your piece to show you about grinding, there's a good chance I'm going to grind the, do the whole thing for you because I like it. It's weird. I used to not like grinding and polishing. Well, I like this stage. I find it very satisfying, and I get excited about seeing the final, the finished product. So I got the edges all done of this. But I want to see if there's any divots. Looks good. One little boop right there. And then, there we go. Less is more. That one's done for that stage. Now we got this other earring. Make sure we're in there. Give it a little dry. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> just got it wet with my finger. That's very smart. All right, I see a little touch of glass right up in this top area. And I see a little bit of smudge, smaltz. Right there, let me grab my. A little, sometimes these wires bend over a little bit and just a little bit. I'm going to get in there and get that wire because sometimes the wire will bend over and then embed itself in an unattractive, in an unseemly way. So. Now these, we still have to do all the edges. See how the edges are not done. We're gonna set, we'll do those edges pretty much in the next step. So let's switch to a fun, colorful one. This one. Lulu, was it you that got the new, who was it that got, Angie, you got the new inexpensive microscope. good you put a link in discord great no if she got a full well it was kind of, it looks like a knockoff of it's not a medgy but it was um it looks a lot like this um if it works it looks looks pretty good 
Did it include, was that price, did that include the stand as well? Because that was a, that's like a quarter of the price of this particular, although, you know, you get, you know, who knows if it's, you know, five years from now still going to be working, but it's, a, you know, how could it not? I mean, it's kind of, it doesn't rely on circuit boards. good for now. Let's get this other one. Stand in microscope. Well, good. Well, let me know. We'll talk in a year and see how it's going because, you know, to be honest, this little micro, the camera I got that I'm using, although I, I wish it had a higher resolution because it's a little bit, you know, it's not super high quality but certainly does the trick. Good for now. Have a look. Ooh. Following an Amazon. Angie is. Yeah, Discord. Not everyone is loving Discord. I'm I'm rethinking whether or not Discord is a good tool. You know, I'm trying new things. <laughs> I am in the process of kind of evaluating all the things I'm doing social media including twitch um just to see what how everything's going and so i if you cannot figure out discord you're not alone you're not alone i'm not sure that discord was the way i feel like maybe just a basic because uh, i'm trying to get away from facebook but maybe just a basic classic forum would be better. And I hate to keep switching things, but you know, sometimes you gotta try things and see how they go. It sounded like such a great idea, but I could just put a four. I wonder if Squarespace has a forum plugin. I'm just talking to myself at this point. There we go. Looks pretty good. 
so TY. It's not super high quality. There we go. All right, one more of these. We're almost done with this. There we go. So we have gotten all of the stuff off. The, we've done the big grind. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the microscope camera because we're not going to need that for the next step. Goodbye, microscope. And we've got another step. In fact, I don't need the microscope at all for this next step, but I want my glasses. So we're going to kind of arrange, let's zoom. There we go. A little bit farther back. Let's get our, which one feels good? They're all the same. We're gonna take a little bit of smoothing. Get these out of the way. Smooth these just a little bit. Yeah, you can't feel that they're a little lumpy, but they are. Get a little water. There we go. Let me scooch this up. There we go. Edges look good. Good. Let's just do these next. Let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. Bring you back. reason it's farther away. It feels pretty good. It feels good.
I do also sell these sticks on my Etsy store. <laughs> there you go, final plug. There we go, a little bit. Feels nice and smooth. All right, we'll set you guys. Well, we got these two left. This will go real fast. That's good. That's pretty good. Nice and smooth. All right, now these edges have been done. Look at that color. These edges are done, but I have to do these, all these edges. It's the fun part of grinding and polishing is over and now the real work begins. That was the exciting part. Now we have to do these edges and we're going to switch our mandrel out. to this one over here. Just the plain one. And we're gonna get a fresh sticker sanding disc. These 60 microns will be good. Let me take a moment, make sure that's And yeah, you could tr use traditional files just to do these edges, but I kind of just like to do them. I usually do them under the microscope and I'm not going to this time. If you ever wonder why oddly shaped earrings are more expensive in my shop, it's because you have to do the edges by hand <laughs> and they take a lot more time. I do need to get the file out as well to get these little corners. Let me do the corners first. I do need to grab my files. Ugh, it's just... See what I want. I want. Do I want this or this? No, I don't want that. Let's just see. I know. I should get the. I'm just going to do the edge. Just get in those corners. Yeah, there we go. Because it's hard to get the enamel out of this corner. And I don't want to lose the crispness. Let me try this other. I like this better. Oh, I like that better, I think. Just gonna get all these wonderful corners. I know, I'm, look at me. Is this one rougher? Maybe this one feels better. One, two, three, let me get these little guys. There's one.
you little bastard. There you go. And we'll get the rest of that later. That's good. I don't know why I just dipped it because I don't need it to be wet for this. This, this actually looks good. I don't see... Oh, that's good. There's no enamel in these corners. Good. Let me get this. I don't know why. Deal with these later. And yeah, I could get out my little holder, but I'm being a little lazy. All right, that should do it. Now. for a first pass. Let's get this one. Good one. Let me get a fresh thing. It does kind of eat up these sanding things, but I'm out of the rougher ones, so 
it all do. This is just the first pass of the edges. Let me get to this last little one and then we'll move back to the front. So many edges, so many little crevasses. There we go, we're almost done. go. So now that's done for that. I'm going to get a fresh, get these out of the way. Go away. And one more sticker. Being a bit free with the stickers, but it's Friday. do the next step. Let's put these over here. The undone ones. And now I'm going to go back to my microscope because I like to see all of the little scratches in the silver so I can remove them. Let's just, do we need to turn on? No, I don't think so. We're just going to is that in the way? No, perfect. Get this out of the way. Move that out of the way.
That's what we zoom in. Let me see if we zoom in. Do we freeze it? Is that too much? Oh, that's probably better. There we go. Getting closer. Keep this one out. Fine. Well, good afternoon, Margaret. TGIF. Oh, I told myself I wasn't going to say that. Whatever. I'm going to stop streaming on Fridays just so I don't have to not have myself say that. All right. This is good for now. That can go with your friends over there. And... There we go. Yes, we'll do this one next. Just shake it up a little bit.
Seems pretty good. All right, we're getting close. One o'clock. Just gotta adjust my focus a little bit. I'm holding it a little bit. Oh, and I do want to get that. There we go. That seems pretty good. These two little guys. Pickles 166 is now fault pickles. Welcome pickles. That is a good name. All right, so ex the excitement continues because now we get to move from the 60 micron dun 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 to the boy that's yep 40 micron 40. I told you this is going to be an exciting gig. We're going to do all of that, but now with 40 micron sandpaper. Buckle up. Did I look at the edges? No, the edges are fine. We're going to do more with the edges. It's just... There we go. Get our... We'll start... Let's start. Look at how much that glows. I am going to, I love this new color. I'm going to name it Sea Foam. Sea Foam? Kelp? I don't know. Kelp's too dark.
next? How about, oh, let's do that other one. Let's do the next one of these. guys over. One more. Do you ever use the jewel tool? Ah, there is a good question. Do I ever use the jewel tool for polishing is a question in the comments. And the answer is no. I own, I actually own two jewel tools. And where did I put my other thing? I'm actually... I hate to even say this. I'm not a fan. Um, it's really expensive. You know, I like to spend money, but it's for what it is. Quite honestly, your money is better spent buying buying one of these Fordhams. Get a really good Fordham, and you won't need a jewel tool. Uh, I have two because I used them when I was teaching. Honestly, before COVID, I was kind of taking them with me. And they're handy for... Um, if you're traveling and I know they're not going to have a lot of Fordhams or whatever, um, they can be handy, but quite honestly, all of the, uh, maybe I'm going to get in trouble with it, but I find that it's a very expensive piece of equipment and all of the little things only fit the jewel tool and they're really expensive. So no, I'm going to stop. Uh, right now about that but so the answer is no and honestly I have two jewel tools even during COVID when I was locked in my bedroom I still used my Fordham and honestly I probably have two jewel, tool, jewel tools to sell if anyone wants one no I think I gave one to my friend Betty so I actually probably only have one right now but but you know I'm being facetious about it um it's a very small it's it's not super loud, it's friendly. So, if you have a jewel tool, more power to you.
that. Oh, and I also have a huge, a huge grinder over there that I use um, for big tool, for big jobs. Old timey, dual arbor grinder that holds a two and a half by something or other belt. Alrighty, two more of this. Let me get a fresh one. One more. We've got these. Now we get to switch to hobbyist. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say, Margaret. Uh, I hate, I mean, it can be really, some people really love their jewel tools and it's a small thing, but quite honestly, if you have a Fordham and you're just working on small pieces, this, this thing, sorry, this is, I feel just as, if you have one of those and, sorry, I should wipe this off, you know, a diamond stick, it doesn't have to be one from me or anything like that, a diamond stick and a diamond disc kind of does the exact same thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, should you get one? I can't tell you. I cannot say. There we go. We'll wipe that off. And now we're going to do some sanding papers. Fun. I'm going to turn the kiln on because we are going to fire polish these. I'm going to set the kiln to 
1400 Fahrenheit, which is what, seven something Celsius. And I'm going to, let's see if our kiln cam is still online. Let's see, we'll find out. Am I in it? Yes, I am. All right, good. Let's plug in the kiln. Wipe it all out. <sighs> Definitely want one of these, two of these, two of these. That should be good. 1400. Beautiful. One of these, one of these. All right. Well, we're jumping the gun a little bit. We still have a lot of, we still have other places to, to go. We have some sandpaper to work through. We got a sanding stick right there, right there. And where's my gray? Oh, there it is. It's hiding in here. We're going to start with gray sandpaper. Get two. Might as well get two. And then we'll do blue. There we go. All right. Now we don't need, oh, we don't need that anymore. You can just go out of the way. And we can zoom out a little bit, I think. There we go. I put my glasses on. Oh. Starting over here. Let's just come over here. Very exciting. And, but you know, there's so many different ways. There's probably as many ways to grind and polish as there are enamel artists. So whatever works for your, whatever works for you. Is the right way. Yeah, sorry, I'm jiggling. This, this is attached to the table, so the camera is going to jiggle a little bit with this. But yeah, no, I totally get that, especially when you're first starting out, it's really hard to know because there is probably, what, you know, a hundred different kinds of sandpaper, a hundred different kinds of little tips for your Fordham. Do you want to get like a sandpaper, like different shapes of grinders, different sizes, different mediums, and... A lot of them will work and a lot of them won't. And figuring out the best practice that works for you is challenging. It took me years to kind of figure out how to finish, how, what process to use to finish my own pieces that kind of gave me the results I was looking for with the least amount of hassle because I am actually, I know it doesn't seem like I'm super lazy, but I'm actually very lazy. If I don't have to do a step, I don't want to do that step. So. That's good. Let's get the edges. actually use this little piece right here. Hopefully, I bet the, the kiln will be up to temperature long before we're quite ready. All right, there we have it. Look how pretty. It's going to be really nice. Edges look clean. All right, next, next on the docket, 
Let's get the Rainbow Baroque. And I can tell you right now, I'm going to spend some time with these edges of these Baroque earrings off camera just because I don't, I, I want them, I want to crisp them up a little bit. But this will be. A good upper body workout right now. That looks pretty good. Crisp that up. Yeah. Hold on, I'm going to fuss with this one edge. A little bit. Let's, with that. Let's get a fresh one of these. It's definitely smoky outside. Do these edges. There we go. All right, two more. 
well, on the gray. <laughs> and we had to do it all over with the blue, the blue coming up next. Yeah, sometimes when you have like a whole pile of earrings, it can just be a lot, a lot. I kind of, as I'm, as I'm getting older, as I'm getting older, I prefer to do kind of a smaller batch just because I've gotten in the weeds before when I have like, you know, well, especially like around Christmas when you're like, oh, I gotta get 20 pairs of earrings done. Um, this is the bottleneck right here because you're at the end, you're kind of tired, you're excited. It's probably a day, you know, you were supposed to mail them yesterday, I don't know. And, but this is the make or break moment right here where, you know, this is, this is where you can, if you don't finish, if you don't take the time to respect this process and do it to the same level that you are doing your enameling, you're kind of bringing everything down. Um, so this is just as important as the beautiful shading because if somebody picks this up and they're like, oh, what are all these scratches? Why is this uneven? That's what they're going to take away, not the gorgeous <laughs> amount of effort that you've put into them. So it's kind of like the... It's the non-glamorous part, but very important. I, but yeah. If I had a if I had an employee in my studio, <laughs> this is what they would be doing all they would they would hate their job so much because this would be what they did every single day. And I'd laugh, I'd be like, here's more for grinding and polishing. I would do the fun part. I would do the initial grind and then just hand them a pile. Hand them a pile. And then I'd be super particular too. I'd be a terrible boss. You don't want to work for me. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to unroll it. Get a little bit of edges. But yeah, straightaway edges are so much more fun to do, easier. There we go. Let's just get some of these. Now, oop. final, well, for this particular step, the final hand polish, we're going to do this level, then we'll wash them, and we're going to put them all back in the kiln for a fire polish. And that might be the end of today for you guys, because I'm then, after I pull these things out of the kiln with a fire polish, I'm going to do more polishing. Maybe start with the 
15 micron sanding belt and then a 9 micron sanding belt and then some, a slurry of pumice powder and then finally I'm going to throw them all into the tumbler with some steel shot. Will that all happen today? I hope so. But it is a lot. It's looking good. I love this. I'm, I love that one. That one is, I shouldn't say how much I love it. <laughs> I love all my little enamel children. Sending them off into their world. That's pretty too. That purple came out. We got to put it. We got one more trip into the kiln. Kiln is up to temperature. Let me pull them. Look, I'm. This wasn't a brand. I broke out a brand new tea cloth for this, and now I've. Don't spend a lot of money for tea cloths because you're going to put these little holes in there. And pull it a little bit. There we go. Just, that's better. Looks pretty good. Let's get Good. Oops, let's get a fresh one.
And we've got six. I'm just trying to think about the trivet situation. Thinking ahead here. Let me just get a little bit of edge work. Let me get you with some edges. That looks pretty good. So now let me get Now we're ready to put these back into the kiln and reheat them and polish the glass. We're going to do, it's called, ooh, look how pretty. It's called a fire polish. But before we do that, I have to wash these with soap and water because obviously I don't even feel like I need to explain why I'm doing that. I don't have a camera over by the sink, so. Yes, enjoy looking at this dirty thing while I go do that. It'll just take a moment. Just a little scrubby scrub with some soap and water. Dropping them on the floor, that's cool. Skin. And let's rinse them with some distilled. lovely now we have this is all dirty we don't want our beautiful and clean enamels dry them off to touch any of this dirty stuff where did I put my I am going to take a moment and think about my trivets I'm going to clean my trivets I'm going to get my get you guys out of the way you hang out over there little clean guys but I want to make sure for this final polish that I've got really clean trivets so I'm going to take a moment oops and clean see I'm just cleaning up the edge of my trivets because it matters we've got just that looks nice and clean Trivet. Might as well get this one. Let's 
So the kiln is up to temperature. Let me just, so these are nice and dry. Which sides did I clean? Well, I could just do, wait, I've got six, never mind. Let's just, I'm obviously way overthinking. So I am going to just put these for a moment under the warm lamp just to make sure there's no moisture on these things. It doesn't really matter. It's more just whatever. So I'm going to do that and then we'll switch to the kiln cam and we'll fire these. outside it smells smoky so let's go to the kiln cam right like that we can see that it's still set for 1400 and I'm just gonna these are good should you do them all at, should we do them all at once yeah let's let's do them all at once So you can see, we're going to have them all at once. That's, that's good. There we go. All right, we'll probably be in for about a minute and a half to two minutes. So enjoy the view. I'm gonna grab a bottle of water that I brought and put in the fridge. Not much really to see and I'm trying not to fuss too much with the zoom because that's how I froze my cameras in the last stream so we're just going to enjoy the beautiful you don't want to pull these out until they are ready that's the dumbest thing but it's true it is true We can go all the way over there. Hmm. Most likely when this gets back up to 1400, we will be done.
It always takes longer because we. It, I haven't had the kiln on all day today. Whatever. All right, 13. I'm not looking I'm gonna make sure everything looks good because I don't want to have to do this again. That looks good. Now look how weird the colors are. Now the colors will, I am gonna zoom in. There we go. Oop. Zoom. Look at the strange colors. Yeah, the colors will go back to normal once they've cooled. And we'll have a look at them and I'll talk to you about kind of what's gonna happen after that. And I am gonna tidy up this area while those are cooling. Let's just clean up the desktop so we can go back over to the workbench. There we go. Yeah, so let me just take a moment and get rid of this gross water. We're done with that for now. You stay there. Our work area. We didn't use that, so you can get put away. And I don't mess with them. I let them kind of just cool down on their own. So that's why we're just taking, we're giving everything a moment to chill, chill out. Because if you start fussing with them, then you get into trouble. And you'll know when you're in trouble. That's the thing about trouble. It's already too late. If you know you're in trouble, you're in trouble. All right, this is garbage. Let's see. Let's get... Clean this up. <laughs> Look at, was a brand new tea towel. No longer, but that is Fine, let's just clean our work area. This is a good opportunity while things are still damp to make sure everything is wiped down because you know these are leaded enamels so we want to make sure. There we go. Let's see how our pieces are. Oh, I should have probably, now I should have pulled them off. All right, so let's go back to the kiln cam and see how things are. There, look, they're back to temperature. I can tell already. They're, they're still hot. They're definitely still hot. But I can turn this off. Let's pull and put you guys here. They look nice. Looks real nice. Oops, sorry. <laughs> there, I put them on these. These are cool. These are steel plates, which will kind of suck up some of the heat. So they'll cool down a little faster. And then we'll have a look at them. They look really nice. Came out really good. You can't rush this. I'm not going to touch them with my, I'm not, I'm not touching them with my fingers. Cause I can still feel the heat or no, the heat's from the kiln. That's just. you out of the way. There we go. You guys go out of the way. No, 
now I'm going to touch them. Hot, 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 hot. One more, one more second. 20 more seconds. Let's see. Alrighty, good enough. Oh, they're nice and toasty. I was a waitress for a couple years, so I don't have, ow. Hot, hot. I bet that's a little hotter than the others. Let's go have a look. Ho, ho, ho. There we go, workbench, workbench. Yeah, let's have a look. There, look how beautiful these are. Let's let me sit down so I don't drop them. So yes, oh man, I just, I really, look how clear that enamel came out. Now we're not totally done, but we're kind of done for the what I'm gonna do live streaming because I am going to do a little bit more polishing on these. These are gonna go into the tumbler to really shine up the, the silver edges, but they came out, the colors are just, really phenomenal, really nice. So it's a new color combo. And the good news is maybe not by the end of today because these are gonna have to take a trip into the tumbler and I gotta take photos, but these will all end up in my Etsy store by the end of the weekend. So these will be the new Seafoam edition. Perfect for summer, perfect for summer 2023. So, and these will get, really pretty so they came out really nice so that that is it for this weekend so have a really good i'm gonna go over to my selfie cam and oh and quick announcement um i have a workshop well i have i'm not going to be streaming next week because two things i have an eye appointment on tuesday and she's going to dilate my pupils which is probably going to mean I'm not going to be able to do much of anything after that if, if the last time was any indication. So, and then I'm teaching a workshop, very exciting, on Thursday and Friday. So that is it. If I really feel like it, I might, I really got to work on my enamel jam piece. So <laughs> that's, that is my excuse. So have a really good weekend everybody and happy enameling.